thousand for a week. So my auntie got us involved and every year she would come up with a team, something for us to do. Yeah, well, the first one, the Charleston girls, it was actually old petticoats that she uh -huh. put frills in that uh -huh. one. I don't know how we got on that lorry. We just asked her. <laughs> and thought, that's where they were. We won the first prize, right. and I think it might have been because we had the first prize sticker. <laughs> they might have wanted us on their boat. Oh, right. And we were behind the, the marine band and we were chatting us up, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> there was a school, we were St Junions, oh. and they were second, and we right. thought they were going to win because they were really good. Jimmy Hoy, he presented the prize. That's right, right, he did. And that was right. the next day, on the Sunday, we had to go to the town hall and get the uh -huh. prize. My husband came running down from my house, and, and but I was at Senga's, and we were running along the road, and we had these great big bones. And I said, to him, Vic? And he says, Oh! <laughs> just to put it up there. We had the bones and kept them for the we next got day. The bones for the butcher. Oh, so and they were bones. Yeah, bones. Yeah, and they were stinking the <laughs> next day. Oh, they were rotten. We took them to the town hall the next day as well. We were dressed as ghosts with spirit, spirit labels. labels. So we went into the most original that year and we won it for the most original. And even just taking part in the spirit, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We had great fun. My granny always had a jar of halfpennies and she would take a handful out for me to throw at the floats as it passed by, so they only got a halfpenny from me, you know. <laughs> Sometimes they had streamers and things, mm -hmm. and the streamers were actually ticket rolls from the bus conductors, you know, from the machines. That, that was our streamers. So they would throw rolls of them, so you would catch them, and sometimes they would have balloons, the, the unblown up balloon. And I remember blowing one up and holding onto it tight because I couldn't tie a knot. I went to Red Cross classes in Dr. Bell's school, and we were asked if we would like to have a float in the Leith pageant that year. That year they were commemorating memories of the war, so every float had to have something from the war. So being the Red Cross, we dressed up in nurses' uniforms, etc., with the Red Cross on our fronts, and we sang songs from the World War all the way along. We had buckets on the lorry with the big Red Cross on the bucket, and we shook, shook the bucket, and people threw their coins into the bucket from the pavement. Sometimes they hit us, <laughs> but we didn't mind. We were first aiders, weren't we? I was the baby in the pram, and my nurse was a guy called Simon Laurie, who was very well known in terms of the pageant at that time. If we couldn't have a lorry, we'd have a pram. So the good old Silver Cross, which was still available then, <laughs> and we, we decided we'd have a boat for one of them and we put a sign on it saying the magistrates tried to stop us but we're still sailing on. In the bottom tray of the pram we also had bottles of whiskey that we would offer the occasional dram to people as we went past, uh, just for a, a, a bit of a laugh. The first Leith Boys Brigade had a pipe band and the 10th Leith Boys Brigade had a bugle band and the Boys Brigade always kept that involvement going. It used to be quite a big thing where you had so many bands in it, you had to separate it with the, the lorries to, so as that you could hear one or the other. Nowadays, I don't think people would realise why it started. We're so used to our NHS that they wouldn't realise that, oh goodness, you had to fund your own hospitals and your own medical care. It's just accepted now that that happens for you. To me, great excitement, all these lorries especially, and all the, the things on them, and being able to throw your money at the lorry. <laughs> How exciting is that? Never mind the bucket. It was going to the lorry. <laughs> and just so many people, the pavements were packed, mm -hmm. the whole length of the parade. So you had to go early to get your spot to make sure you were at the front. But yes, that was all very exciting. And they would have things to throw to you as well, whether it be chocolate or balloons or whatever. I think it was a very special day for people to know when the gala day was and the pageant was. So even just coming to watch that, you know, was special to a lot of people. And, you know, even down the links yesterday, the number of people that spoke because, you know, you knew them through all the different things that go on in Leith. 
and I think it brings folk together. I, I was speaking to a man who I think he said he was 80, and he now lives at, lives at Kerstorfen, but he was in Leith or the Galadi, he wouldn't miss it, you know. So it still means that much to people. I became involved in 1995 because they were resurrecting the pageant. I think it was some funding they got from with the tall ships coming. Mm -hmm. And Leith Rotara approached the schools and um, I was a very keen parent helper. We did an actual whale being murdered <laughs> on the oh back gosh. of a lorry. The children all made little silver fish and that was yeah. his tail coming up there. And that was boats with children in it with the harpoons. <laughs> My son was inside that whale there mm -hmm. with super soakers. <laughs> That's down the back of Duncan Place. Uh -huh. they, they had all these workshops there which is all being flattened now. Uh -huh. And these were like old dads that made all these frames and I yeah. sewed the fabric and we stretched it over so there was a sort of timber frame of it. There was that whole generation that Leith Gallaudet and the pageant was all part of them and their kids were at the school and so they were only too delighted to mm -hmm. do it all again. I came to the Citadel in August 1995, mm -hmm. so I missed the 1995 gala. The following year, I said, well, I think we should do it. And I went over to Graham's, Graham the Builders, and I explained what we were going to do. And said, I no bother. On the week of the gala, just before it, they would put their newest lorry out for a short delivery on a Friday morning. So it came back early, and then they would drive over here. And then on a Friday afternoon, we would work sometimes until it was almost dark, decorating the lorry, and it was great. We had some um, great themes. If you filmed them at the start of the parade, and then managed to film them at the end of the parade, you'd see a physical change in their whole character. You know that if they start off shy, they'll be like waving and screaming. I mean, '96 was the first time, and the Citadel. I'm really pleased to say has taken part in Leith Gala every year since. And we used to always be scunnered because Leith Primary School always, without fail, won the best vote award. We could never ever beat them. But we had loads of fun and we had loads of noise, made loads of noise.